what you're going to see next, I'm going to show you a little demo here, is our AI study tool in my lab and mastering. It's now available in a subset of problems, which is ever expanding, and a subset of titles, which we're trying to increase as fast as we can, making sure that we focus on accuracy and value to the student. Um, so here, I'm gonna give you a quick demo. Course, and I'm given the question about answering how many anions there are in 3.5 grams of magnesium bromide. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer, and hopefully I don't get it correct. I didn't. And so in this case, whereas in the past, I would just get an opportunity to practice without any formative aspects, now I have a chance to interact with our AI tutor. When I pop this up, the important thing for you to know is that in advance, we've thought about, well, what are the steps that are needed to solve this problem? And for each of those steps, we create a multiple choice question that helps a student get on track. The idea being that they can work through these go back and answer the primary question in a way that helps them understand the procedure so that they're empowered to do this in the future, that they can transfer that knowledge to a subsequent problem on the same topic. Now, if it was a conceptual problem, it would be slightly different. Instead of giving them a series of steps, we would give, well, what are the prerequisite concepts you need to understand? So imagine it's a chemical bonding problem um, and it asks about polarity. We would ask about electronegativity, which is a sort of a prerequisite concept for that. But let me show you how it works. Um, if I just ask, can you give me the final answer? We have specifically told the bot to act as a Socratic tutor. So it's not going to focus on giving them the answer. It's, it's all about trying to help them understand and transfer this to a test. You can also ask about anything chemistry related. But if you ask about things that are far afield, like Shakespeare, it's generally not going to do that. So it says, hey, I'm a chemistry professor. Uh, it probably shouldn't say it's a professor, it's a tutor. But you get the idea that it's going to stay on task. So in this case, the very first question here is not just talking about anions. It's working them through the procedure. So in this case, you're going to have to do a unit conversion, go from grams to moles to figure out how many anions there are. So we could start by answering this. Remember, these are created in advance by telling the system we need to have a robust track to get the student to understand how to do this. So it says, remember that the subscript in the formula indicates the number of atoms in the element in the compound. So it's not going to add the molar masses. It's, you know, we need to do something else. So let's go ahead by saying by multiplying. And that's also incorrect because that would not give the correct result. The correct answer is to add the molar mass of magnesium and twice the molar mass, that's why I was talking about that subscript, of bromine, a bromine. To arrive at the correct answer, you need to remember that you add the molar masses. So the next thing it's going to ask me to do, well, how do you go from mass to moles? And in this case, you're going to need the molar mass, but it's not adding. So again, we've done all of this in advance. You can ask, why do I need molar mass and the system will give you a thoughtful answer in this case you need the molar mass because it allows you to convert between the mass of a substance and the number of moles so i can go through this entire script that will eventually get me to the final answer but it's a slightly different problem that i'll have to take back and put in the correct variables but now i should understand the procedure so the hope is that this really empowers the student to be able to handle any of these problems in the future. We're never gonna claim that this is as good as coming to see you in an office hours experience, but for that 90% of students that are either too intimidated to come or can't make that time, what we're trying to do is provide a valuable learning resource for them that they're comfortable engaging with that helps them in the moment that's more dynamic than anything that's really ever existed before. So I'm really excited about this feature. I do think it is probably one of the most transformative things that we've done. And it really makes me feel excited about what's going on in the classroom and what you all are going to be able to accomplish on the front lines with, with this type of technology.